Today I'm going to go over a few criteria. Line work. Coverage with a wide brush. Sponge coverage. Line work over another paint. Blend it with another color using a brush. I'm also going to check how paints are going to be blended with a sponge and how each white paint behaves as a background. At the end, I'm going to make a stress test to check how the paint is holding to the surface. Hello! Before we start, please like, subscribe and click the bell button to know when I post. I make a variety of time lapses, makeup tutorials and product reviews. So if that's what you enjoy, this is the channel for you. Finally, today we are going to see some swatches and in today's video it's going to be Wax Paste Paint or Acacia Senegal Gum Base Paints. If you are not sure what it means, go to the first video to see all the differences. If I don't speak clear enough or too fast, just remember to put subtitles on. You can also slow down the video in the options. I deliberately not shown you how I pick up the paint from the pot because normally I keep my paints open and they might dry a little bit compared to ones that I just received from the shop and they are still nice and fresh and different times of loading the brush might bring you to the wrong conclusion of how fast this particular paint is loading. There is one more thing which I would like to mention before we start doing swatches. Each of these paints has its own consistency which works the best for this particular paint. I'm not sure if that's only my opinion or you will notice the same. For example, wolf paint you will feel that it has a lot more on the brush, it needs to be a bit thicker comparing to the FX, but the quality of these paints are very very similar. The coverage is brilliant for both of them. The same with the sponge, we need to find its own consistency for each paint. Before actual swatches, I'm going to prepare my background. Top darker one will be a regular color and the other one uh, at the bottom it is a metallic one. Metallics are normally softer so they blend faster and that will allow me to see the effect of blending a bit faster. I'm starting with the tag. With line brush the paint is nice, bright and it's easy to work with. I have had tag in my kit as a white color for some time and I quite liked it. When working with a flat brush it behaves very nicely as well and as you see it's quite opaque. And now I'm going to the sponge which is also working quite nice. And I'm going three times over the other color so you can see how it blends or not blends. In this case you see it doesn't pick up color very quickly which is nice for the overlaying work. Now I'm trying liner brush and making a few swirls with it and it works very well. The next test is to see how paint behaves over the other paint. So here I'm painting with a light brush over the other glycerin paint since glycerins are mostly used for bases. Here I'm doing a few swirls so you can see how it works together, whether it picks up the paint or not. In this case paint doesn't pick up too much paint from underneath which means that it's very good for line work over the other paint. We'll see how it looks when it dries. Some paints can lose their brightness after a few minutes so we'll need to check later. As you see with a liner brush it blends even less and lines are even whiter there. Now I'm doing the opposite, I'm going over white tag with another paint and see how easy it is to work over this paint. First I waited for background to dry out very well and only then I went over with another paint. And in this case I would say that paint doesn't react, it stays really nice and crisp so it's really easy to work over this white tag color. And the last stage I'm pulling white flat brush over another color and I'm using metallic paint so it's even softer and it's easier to blend. Uh, so it will be easier to see how it's blending, how fast it's blending. At the end of this video you'll see comparison of all of these paints and uh, see how they look against each other. That was the first time I was using PXP and samples actually were sent to me especially for this review from Part Explosion and I am surprised how crisp the lines are so I'm really looking forward to see how it looks in the next test. 
but even here you can see that intensity is very good it's very easy to pull the brush to make nice lines without repeating the line over it works well from the first time when working with a flat brush i would say it's also nice and opaque when working with sponge paint was working perfectly and now I will go over another paint with a sponge to see how it's blending. When I worked with line brush over another paint, it felt quite dry but quite intense. When I added more water, it started picking up a little bit of color, but I wouldn't say that it's bad. You can see it yourself. So here I'm trying again just to let you see if that's repeating or not. Just to make sure I'm doing it third time, and I picked up a bit more paint than I. Um, did before and this time it's working really really good so it's probably me that needs to pick up more paint on the brush before I actually start smudging it. Wax paints normally work in really well with liner brush now I'm working with glycerin paint on the top and wax paint underneath and it feels a bit drier but it doesn't mix at all with the layer underneath which is pretty good I think I painted dark blue over dark blue and you cannot see much difference even though um, my brush was going over the white color. The last test is going to be a flat brush going over metallic soft color and I'm making three long strokes without reloading the brush. I'm doing a bit more random tests, uh, for example painting on my arm now and on the right side is tag paint and on the left is PXP and as you see they're all um, working really nicely i think tag is a little bit more transparent but i think it pulls a bit longer and pxp is a, just a tiny bit more intense but then it, it feels a bit drier in the beginning of this review i thought i'll do the bending test where i bent the rubber in the middle and saw how it behaves but then i thought i won't continue it on all of the paints because i don't think we bent um, the paint on our faces or our hands that often instead I've done a rubbing test on my hand and also I've done it on the rubber later on now I'm trying to rub out the paint with uh, my other hand which is totally dry and the paint is dry as well so um, from what you can see it holds pretty well and doesn't happen much to uh, my arm so this test is run on completely dry arms if you would be sweating obviously that would change and also paints can react differently in a few hours on my arm since our bodies um, always release some chemicals and after a few hours um, paints might behave a bit differently as well this is final high resolution photo for you to see the strokes I didn't record the part for line work, but I was very pleased with it. It was making really nice smooth lines. Whereas with the flat brush, I wasn't sure if that was my fault or if it was the paint. But when I applied it for the first time, it was behaving like I would have a very thick cream before painting. Sometimes when I paint in kids who have the sun cream on, it's kind of merges together in one place but then leaving small dots of no paint on the skin. And I wasn't sure what was happening here, whether, whether it was the same. So here I had to do further investigation. So I made sure that I prepared my rubber well. I went over with a powder to make sure that it's not oily. Here you can see a close-up. It's probably not very much visible and coverage is very good but this effect is happening again so add the small pieces like there are dots from where the paint is going away I think that would work better on the skin itself because rubber this rubber is kind of very slippery and I think it, it exaggerates the effects what's happening here but it is happening so you know it if we speak about sponge coverage i would say it's a strong intensity but um, the same way it's quite gentle and really nice and even when i go into mixing two colors together it's creating very nice blend blending in very smoothly from one color to another when going over with white paint over the dark paint i think i picked up not enough color maybe i didn't work the paint well 
because it looked a little bit weak but when I picked up the color again I worked the white paint a bit more into creamy consistency and that was looking really really well if I speak about coverage I think I like sponging more than brush um, but maybe I just would need to have another go with the brush when applying dark color over this white it felt a little bit on the drier side but on the other hand it didn't smudge at all which is really nice because lines would be more crisp next I'm going to go with liner which works very well in my last test I'm going with a flat brush over soft background and I'm not reloading brush so you see how it behaves uh, when pulled three times in a row. Now I'm trying out the wolf paint, I do like to work with it, the lines are crisp and the intensity is very good as you see. The only thing sometimes I find bothering me with wolf paint is that when I load it on a small brush uh, like this one, like number two, it feels like consistency is too thick and it's going to blob. It never actually blobs and it always can turn out nicely. And this is just my personal opinion. I do like them, I do use them all the time, but this is the feeling that I have whenever I pick up the paint. However, with a bigger brush and with flat brushes, it behaves perfectly and I don't have the same feeling. It feels really nice. And here, if we speak about color, it is very intense and strong white color. The same is when I'm using a liner brush. When sponging, color is very bright and opaque. When I start mixing two paints together with a sponge, the color doesn't mix very well, which I don't think it's a good or a bad quality, it's just the quality of the paint. Like Crivoline blends really smoothly, but then with Wolf, I think it will be better to go with stencils over. And also if we look at the sponge, we can hardly see any blue on there. That just shows you how little paint is left there. Okay, let's go with Wolf over a dark color. Uh, the line goes down really nicely and it still doesn't pick up much paint. Also paint looks very consistent, it doesn't have lighter and darker parts, it's just similar all over. It was strange but I didn't enjoy being wolf as a background because when I went over with darker color it wasn't as strong as I expected it to be. And when I go with the same brush over darker blue color you see that the color has changed on my brush. But when I go back and do lighting with wolf it works perfectly. Next I'm using white flat brush over the darker color to see how it blends. And now I'm going to run a test on my hand. As you see, um, both paints are working really well. Probably wolf a little bit uh, brighter, uh, but generally they are both very good quality paints. And this is a final high resolution photo for you. With Australia Face Paint, I love how it loads very quickly on the brush. The opacity is very good and there is no need to reload the brush very often. For both flat brush and the sponge, it also worked very good. The opacity was good and the brightness as well. I forgot to record next two steps, but let's analyze it anyway. It does react and blends well with underneath paints as you see from both sponge and from brush results. As you see next to the main swirls, I tried again, but it gave the same result. On the other hand, the dark paint over white was really opaque and strong. The paint wasn't smudging at all, and I wonder how stenciling would work over this paint. And here they are three strokes without reloading brush over a soft metallic paint. I like the opacity of the gray's paint, the color is strong and it uh, loads nicely. Uh, maybe it feels a little bit on the drier side but it's hardly noticeable. For brush and for sponge they are very intense colors and bright. When it's mixed with a darker color I would say it works the same as Australia paint, it blends quite well with the color underneath. 
but when it comes to a line brush it does not react as much and it works well over without blending and from the samples above you can see how brush leaves nearly white lines liner also works perfectly dark paint looks a bit strange because it works well but it does look a bit lighter as you see uh, although when I go over the dark color it doesn't show any white in it and the last sample is going with white color over a glycerin soft paint to show how it changes the color over time I didn't record the actual painting on my arm but these two paints were working very similar and you can see the result over here For a long time the FX was my favorite paint for white color. Now I'm not sure. I love it the same, but now I have so many more paints and I quite enjoy using them. After this review I'll have a long time before I'll have to decide which white paint to buy. Going back to the FX, it works perfectly for lining, it works great for flat brush and for sponging. When sponging it did pick up some paint, not too much but still. Liner was working perfectly. When going with white color over dark, I was really enjoying the process because it didn't pick up much paint and as you see I keep going and going and it doesn't pick up the paint from underneath. Liner worked well as well. When going with the dark paint, it felt a little bit drier. Also paint didn't look very uh, opaque, although it was, it was alright, it is still alright, it's just my feeling that it was just a bit lighter than I would expect. And the last swatch, again, white paint over glycerin metallic paint. I started making this video about half a year, a year ago and made the sample and then only realized that Global has a new formula for their paints. So I decided to leave this one so you can see how the old sample looks like. I quite liked the opacity of the old paint, but there was one problem which is actually not the case in the new paint. When I was using a flat brush or a sponge, it was leaving some spaces unpainted. I made some samples twice and it was working the same way. On the arm, it was working differently, it was much better. But sometimes when I was working with children, I still could see some part of this effect. Very little, but it was there. Otherwise, I like the old formula, I like the line work and the opacity, and this was the paint that I would be enjoying having in my kit. With a new formula, I like the way it does the lining. The lines are opaque, they are smooth. Wide brush and sponging, they both work perfectly. The paint is opaque, is bright, very high intensity. Only by these samples I could say that Global did a good job by changing the formula because I like this paint even better. With the line work over another paint it was keeping its color well. Going with a flat brush over another color didn't change the color too fast. I forgot to do sponging over another paint but I did this test separately where the white kept its color without blending too much. With white as a background the dark color was quite intense and it didn't lose its color, so it didn't blend. With liner brush over my arm, both paints work really, really well. I was pleased with consistency, color, intensity, line work was very precise. And also have a look at high resolution picture, just to compare and see how it looks all together. Although this paint's main ingredient is Acacia Cynical Gum, the next ingredient is Paraffin, which is wax. That's why I decided to test it as a wax paint. It is easy to pick up the paint. The paint is soft, but also very intense. Um, it goes on very well and without any effort onto the rubber. Liner works good as well. Both white brush and the sponge, they work nicely and cover the area well. When blending two colors together it does pick up a little bit of paint but just a little bit not too much and as you see a nice gradation happening there. White color uh, looks quite strong on the dark color but it 
mix this a little bit when I picked up a bit more creamier consistency it did work better than from the beginning um, it's kind of in the middle it's not too bad it's not like the uh, the best one so I did a little bit more testing and I picked up more creamier consistency it worked nicely as you see it is a bit stronger Although their color does pick up a little bit of white paint, it still looks very strong. I also really like the coverage of the flat brush over the dark color. With chameleon paint, we can see a lovely nice coverage, a strong opaque color. The same for flat brush and for sponge, the color is very strong and opaque and looks really nice as you see. When I start blending it does pick up a little bit of color, hardly something left on the sponge and liner works well as well. I like how the white goes over the dark color. It feels a little bit on a drier side at the beginning because I picked up not enough paint, but then when it's more creamier, it does look really, really nice and strong. The paint itself is quite easy to pick up. It does work well as well as a background because dark color doesn't pick up too much paint, just a tiny little bit. And the final swatch on the rubber. When painting with these two colors on my arm, Chameleon was looking a bit brighter, but bear also in mind that when the paint is drier, it loses a little bit of color. For example, when I was doing swatches on these rubbers, always second patch was looking um, a bit brighter. Uh, but when the paint is drying, um, both samples starting to look very similar. Before we start looking at the next category, we still need to do a stress test. But I thought it would be good to have a look at all of these paints now. I played a little bit with intensity of the picture and with a contrast, so you can see the white in a different perspective. Here we have 10 paints and it's really hard to see which white is better and more intense. I hope to weaken this picture will help you to take a decision. Here we're looking at the normal picture again and let's do a stress test now. Now I'm going to make a rub test or stress test. I'm not sure if that's even... Um, compatible to what we are using will it be any use for you but I thought I'll still do that so I'm going over two designs two first samples at the top five times I did it probably a little bit too hard so I will do all of the paints but then I'll start over with a bit light, light pressure on the side So I'm starting again, this time I'm going on the left side, I'm not going over the previous rub and it is going to be 10 times much lighter though. I like all of these paints and they're all very good quality, so it's really hard to tell which one is better. Now I rubbed 10 times on each paint and now I'm going to go over the same place, so it's going to be 20 rubs. And starting again, 10 more, so 30 times altogether. And finally, starting actually to show. I don't think this rubbing test is very, very um, accurate, but this is the best that I could do. The, <laughs> the, probably the best way is to use a special machine to have a similar pressure, but so I'm not the machine and I was trying to do my best.
I hope this review will help you to make your own opinion about the paints, about the ones that you think they're better and you would like to use. Next video is going to come out in about two weeks and I'm going to cover probably the rest of the paints that you know. Because altogether I gathered 24 paints and I will be very surprised if you find another brand which I haven't tested. Back to our review and you can see again all of the paints after rubbing test and you can compare this under a different light. Make sure to pause the video whenever you need. And now we're back again to the normal lighting. And for sake of you telling that that wasn't enough, <laughs> I decided to wash it. I washed it without any soap, just under the running water. And just for you to see how the rubber looks after all these paints. While I'm washing my paints, get ready to see another two paints, which I decided to put into a different category which will be Acacia Senegal Gum. They look a bit different on the skin, that's why I decided to put them there. By the way, if you like One Stroke Technique or you would like to learn it, there is a group for you which is called One Stroke Beauty. You can find a lot of inspiration there or you can show your work. There is also a special chart for you at the top of the group where you can find the artists who inspire the whole world with their amazing one-stroke design. You can tick all the artists that inspire you or you can add your own option if they are not there. I was deciding for a long time in which category to put these paints, whether they should go into the glycerin or wax category. At first I recorded the samples together with the glycerin paints, but they had a bit different quality so they didn't match there. So I decided to put it into the wax video, but to put it still apart and make it as a different category. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, please have a look at the first video where I explain all the differences between the, the types of the paint. Generally, I really enjoyed painting this paint. It was a pick, it was even um, quite strong color, working well with line brush, working well with liner, with white brush and with a sponge. It doesn't blend much, so I would say for stencils, great. I liked it as a background and lines are crisp and you can do the variety of thicknesses without problems at all. Dmart. Dmart is probably not very well known around the world, but it is known in Russia. I discovered this brand when I was invited to Russia as a judge for a neon body painting festival and this was one of the sponsors. I got quite a few paints from them, including white, so I decided to include it into the review, hoping that maybe this video will be watching lots of Russian people so they can compare this brand to another brand. But speaking about the paint itself, I'm not exactly sure what to think about it, because here I was liking it. I like the line work, sponging, overlapping paint over another paint. It wasn't blending at all, so it would be great for um, stenciling, for example. The thing with this paint is that I was told that this paint can be inconsistent. In one delivery it could be really good and in another it could be more transparent, it's not as intense. They are relatively new company, so I hope they will sort their problems because what I have here I really like. And here I'm painting on my arm. It is very easy to vary the thickness of the line. It is intense and yes, I quite like it. Here I'm showing you the picture with the different brightness, but I think the light was a bit stronger on the left side as the rubber itself also a little bit lighter from the left. I was doing stress tests of these paints a few days later, so I hope my pressure was similar, but they were holding pretty well. 
I was wrapping 10 times each time and I've done it 3 times, so 30 altogether. They look a little bit brighter comparing to the Vox ones, but I think it's also because they don't have this huge hole in the middle when I was rubbing too hard for the Vox paints. And again, light from the left is a bit stronger, but I think they're very, very comparable. A new face paints arrived straight from manufacturer. Thank you, Snazaro, for sending me these samples for my white paint review. A sample for face paint review has come from Heart Explosion with the, together with a nice letter and what else has come? Invitation to Jumpvention in October where I can see my name! I received some samples of Fusion White Paints from JustPaint.com and they also sent me some stencils which is amazing, thank you! And the biggest thanks for Superstar who sponsored me for World Body Painting Festival and sent me all of these paints including whites. By the way, making the video review of all these paints is in the queue, so stay tuned! If you are on Instagram, pop in into one of my accounts and say hello! I do arts and crafts, face painting, makeup or healthy food and travel. And for those who stayed with me for the whole video, I've got a homework. Write in the comments what you've learned today. If you didn't learn anything, write it as well. I would love to know. Looking forward to your answers and I'll see you in two weeks with a new video. Bye!